the material for temple construction. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Ephesians 2 1-2. Now, let me quote my own translation of these verses. My translation is published only in my book, Exploring Through Ephesians. I have made no attempt to produce a polished translation. I simply pulled the original Greek words, over into English, so that you might be able to get a little different viewpoint. I have done this for years, in Southern California, it is known as the Megiacus Ad Absurdum translation. Now, here is a literal translation of the verse, and you, being dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the age, spirit of the age, secularism, course, principle, of this world, cosmos, society, civilization, according to the prince of the power, authority, of the air, haze, smog, of the spirit that now worketh, energizes, in the sons, children, of disobedience. And you being dead, in your trespasses and sins. Perhaps you notice, that I left out hath he quickened, which in your Bible is printed in italics. This means it was not in the original text, but was inserted to smooth out the translation. I am perfectly willing to admit, that something belongs there, to give explanation, and hath he quickened is alright, but I am trying to pull out the original, and give you the meaning, without smoothing out the translation. You being dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the age, the spirit of the age, that is, according to secularism, according to the way of the world, or according to the principle of this world. The world, does not mean the physical universe. It means the cosmos, society, civilization, life pattern, or lifestyle of the world today. According to the prince of the power, authority, of the air, the spirit that now worketh, that is, energizes, in the children, sons, of disobedience. The devil takes this dead material, we are dead in trespasses and sins, and he energizes us. That is the reason the cults are as busy as termites, and with the same results. False religionists put us to shame in their zeal. Satan is energizing them. People ask me whether I am aware, that miracles are being performed in the cults. I won't argue that. Maybe they are. I know some things are exaggerated in our day, but maybe some of them are true. Then who is doing the miracles? Satan is able to duplicate a great many of the miracles, that are scriptural miracles. After all, weren't the magicians of Egypt, able to duplicate the first miracles performed by Moses? Of course, the later miracles they could not duplicate. When man gets into the realm of the new birth and closeness to God, Satan is powerless against him, but he is potent today, to delude and to deceive, and to lead people astray. He is potent today, in the cults and false isms of the world, among whom also, we all had our conversation, in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, Ephesians 2 3. To better understand verses 1 to 7, we need to recognize, that they comprise a single periodic sentence in the Greek language. Classical Greek is filled with periodic sentences, all kinds of genitive absolutes, phrases, and tenses, it is difficult to read. Koine Greek is generally easy to read, but here is a periodic sentence, which reveals that Paul was capable of writing better Greek, than the Koine of his day. The authorized version, by the way, breaks this into a sentence that ends at verse 3. That is permissible and entirely right, because verse 4 is a contrasting statement, joined by the conjunction, but. We have already noted, that the chapter begins with, and, which connects it to the preceding chapter. In chapter 1, Paul had been talking about salvation, and picked up the theme of the mighty greatness of his power, in verse 19. This is the power that quickens dead sinners. Now, here in chapter 2, verse 1, he says that we were dead in trespasses and sins. That speaks of the death of Adam, which is imputed to us. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, Romans 5:12. Adam's sin made us the sons of a fallen man, and we all have the same nature that Adam had. 
It is a fallen nature, with no capacity or inclination to God. When I look back upon my own conversion, I really think it was a miracle. How in the world could God save a boy, who had been brought up as I had been? My father had high moral principles, and was known as an honest man, but he was not a Christian, and was antagonistic to the church. He never darkened the door of a church, but he made me go to Sunday school as a boy, and I always protested about going. Then my dad died when I was 14, and I found myself adrift in the world. I ran all the way to Detroit, Michigan, to get away from every authority. I turned down work for Ford Motor Company, and took a job with Cadillac. There I got into awful sin. I associated with a group of men, particularly a man from Hungary, who thought I looked like his son who had died. He took me under his wing. But he was a sinful man, and took me places where a 16-year-old boy ought not to go. I got homesick, and went back home, and when I think back to it now, I realize that it was God who made me homesick. If I hadn't gone back home, the devil would have won the day. I was dead to God, and to the things of God. Then a man told me I could have peace with God through Jesus Christ. How wonderful that was. I say it was a miracle. I wasn't looking for God. I was running from Him as fast as I could, because I was dead in trespasses and sins. Adam died spiritually, the day he disbelieved and disobeyed God. He ran away from God, and tried to hide. He wasn't looking for God. That is the position of natural man today. This idea that men have a little spark of the divine, and are looking for God, is as false as can be. On the day Adam disobeyed, he died to God, and to the things of God, although he didn't die physically, until 900 years after he had eaten the fruit. But he had lost his capacity, and longing for God. He was separated from God. After all, death is separation. All death is a separation. Physical death is separation of the spirit and the soul, from the body. When someone dies, we don't see the separation of the spirit and the soul, we see only the dead body. Spiritual death is a separation from God. After man sinned, he could go on living physically and mentally, but he was spiritually dead, separated from God. He passed that same dead nature on to all his offspring. It is only the convicting work of the Holy Spirit, that can prick the conscience of any man in this world today. You can't do it, and I can't do it. Only the Spirit of God can do it.